Hey guys, welcome to the video today. Welcome to my channel. We're gonna talk about the one and only watch, kind of the thing that we toy with as crazy watch idiot savants. We say, hey, I could be happy with just one watch, and we fool ourselves. I don't know if that's necessarily true for, uh, for most instances, but it's kind of fun to think about, hey, if I only had one watch in my collection, what would keep my attention? What would make me happy? That's the topic of today's video. Now, I've got a couple Rolexes here on this uh, Nomos layout. For a lot of people, that one and only watch would be a Rolex. And certainly, if you're in that camp, I mean, that's awesome. Rolex is dang hard to beat. They make a dang good watch. And uh, certainly, owning a commodity is a desirable thing to do. So a lot of people go the Rolex route, but today I'm not gonna be talking about having a Rolex as your one and only. I'm gonna be talking about having a Nomos. Now, I have this uh, Club Sport 42 Neomatic. I, I purchased this last month. It's a watch that I'm huge on, and I think it's underrated, it's underappreciated. There's not a lot of videos on it out there outside of myself. So we're gonna focus on this one, and I'm gonna tell you why this Nomos could make a great one and only watch. Now that being said, I know Nomos isn't for everybody. Not everybody likes the clean, organized, Bauhaus style, minimalistic, contemporary style coming out of the Glashütte region of Deutschland, but you can take the principles that I talk about today and apply it and think about, hey, what would really be the one piece that I could be happy with, that I could be a sane and normal person with and just have one nice watch. So that's what we're talking about today. That's the topic of the video. Let's jump into it. Let me pull this Nomos up in front of the camera and tell you why I like it so much and why it makes a great piece, a good daily wear piece. So for me, details are huge. I think I was probably the first or one of the first channels ever to do macro video on watches on YouTube, I, I love looking at the details. I love looking at a clean, well-finished, well-organized dial that doesn't have dust or imperfections or blemishes, that doesn't have a handset that's too short or has rough edges where you can tell, eh, this one, when it was stamped out, they didn't do a great job, the mold is getting old or something like that. Uh, I love looking at this and seeing the color play on the reflective dial seeing the guilloche texturing on the sub-seconds, seeing the, the uh, Arabic markers and hashes where they're kind of cut out of the dial and deep filled with Superluma, Superluminova BGW9. So in low light situations, the watch really has good longevity and good visibility. So I love seeing the details here. I like seeing the accent color of text here, kind of this golden brown that plays with the dial when the dial hits you know, direct sunlight and it takes on more of a bronze tone to the eyes. So I like seeing the depth, the detail, the beveled handset that's long, that reaches all the way to the end of this uh, dominant, sorry, dial dominant watch here. That's impressive. So for me, I've got to have a watch that has the good crisp details and depth because you know what, it's fun to look at the details. You might not be looking, you know, taking out a loop or looking at macro video that often with your watch, but it's nice to know that the quality is there. And if you did go in on this high magnification level, you'll be impressed. I mean, there's something to that that I appreciate. I also like good craftsmanship, good finishing here. You see a beautiful polished case, nice and thin, sweeping lugs and a beautiful brushed original bracelet that's very high quality. So I'm gonna give you guys some wrist rolls here. I love seeing the pop and the presence, the light play, and again, the comfortable nature. I don't, if I'm gonna have a one and only watch, I don't want it to be unwieldy and too heavy, uh, too tall where I knock it into things if I'm uh, not careful. You know, there's something to having weight but there's an even better quality when it is just executed so well that at times you can forget that you're wearing it, that you see the comfort and the wrist drape and uh, again, the light play and everything. It's gotta have the good finishing and it's gotta have the good fit. It helps if the watch is versatile because you know what? I'm a bracelet guy. If a watch does not have a good bracelet option from the factory, I know it's not gonna stick around in my collection for a long time, so it couldn't be a one and only watch. So if you have some versatility, you can have a nice bracelet, occasionally put it on, you know, Shell Cordovan or Milanese Mesh 
or rubber, whatever your fancy is, it's nice to have the versatility. And I think the Nomos, although it is more of a sport, uh, sorry, a dress styled sports piece, it still carries some good versatility um, and good options from the original uh, manufacturer, the OEM. So let's talk about this bracelet real quick. I like having an adjustable bracelet. This one has very short links. All you need is a small screwdriver and you can add and take out uh, however many links you need so you're gonna be able to get a good fit. You've got micro adjustments on the clasp with a um, pull tab so you don't, actually don't even need a tool to make those micro adjustments. I like having that feature. I like having the adjustability because you know what? In the summer, your wrist is gonna be a little bit bigger than they are in the wintertime, just with temperature change and everything. So you wanna have you wanna have that adjustability. You don't wanna have a watch that if you gain a little bit of weight or your wrist swells up, it becomes uncomfortable. This is a feature that I like about this uh, Club Sport 42 Neomatic. Now let's talk about what's arguably the most important part about the watch, and that's what operates the timekeeping, the movement. Now this one has an in-house movement you can see through an exhibition case back. It is absolutely beautiful. It's got the classic three-quarter plate, beautiful finish work, thermally blued screws. If I have a one and only watch, I, I guys, as, as much as a good movement and closed case back is, like with my, uh, my Air King or my GMT Master II, I like looking at a well done movement, you know, not necessarily at a 2824 or uh, the 2892 or something like that. I like seeing these original in-house movements with the thermally tempered screws, the full balance bridge there with the free sprung balance wheel. I like looking at the engraving here, uh, reading the jewel count and the, the positional regulation and where it's made. I like the fact that this one has a unique serial number. You know, I like that attention to detail, guys. The details are big with uh, with Bruce Williams. So I love this movement. This is a good movement. It's regulated to six positions. It is done in house. Um, servicing costs, whenever you need it done, every you know five or so years, are very reasonable. Uh, so I, I like having a good in house movement that I can see, that I can look at the details, and it's almost more fun to look at the back of the watch than it is to look at the face of the dial. That's something that I, I just really identify with. So for those reasons, I think the Nomos could be a great everyday watch, a good luxury piece. It has you know, the in-house manufacturing. Nomos makes, I think, 95% of all of the components, not just the movement. I believe they buy the crystals, they buy the leather straps, they have a German dial specialist, a manufacturer that they get the dials from. But really, they are, they are, uh, they're going about watchmaking the right way in Glass Huta, and I, I like that in-house factor. I like that pride of looking at the dial and seeing made, or seeing made in Germany, just like you can take pride in seeing Swiss made or uh, Japan on a nice Grand Seiko. So the Nomos, I think, at least for me, it's got the details, it's got the finishing, it's got the movement, it's got the bracelet, the versatility, uh, the history, you know, it doesn't have huge history, but it's got its own identity, its own DNA, it's very strong. And if I could only just have one watch, let's say I had to sell my Rolexes and my Seikos and all my other pieces, I will tell you guys, it would be tough, but I think I could be happy with just this Nomos. I like the big date at the three o'clock position. I like, uh, you know, like I said throughout the video, I like everything about the watch. So in the comments section, I'd like to be, I'd like to hear what you guys could get by with for your one and only watch. Now don't tell me some crazy Vacheron or, or something that you'll never be able to attain. Keep it reasonable. Yes, it can be a stretch, but I'm interested to know what watch, what one watch do you feel could make you happy if you just had to have one? It's not something that many of us will ever do, but I think it's a fun thing to think about and to toy with the idea. Because let's be honest here, a lot of us have very respectable collections of affordable or attainable pieces. It's okay for us to spend $200 on a watch, $500 on a watch, 600, 1,000 here or there, maybe 2,000 stretching it here or there. We have a good solid rotation of Seikos and Hamiltons. You know, we have some, we have some pretty cool stuff, but you know, when you've never taken that luxury step and you've gone into a $4,000, $5,000, $6,000 watch, it's fun to think about. So 
If you're in a position to do that, if you're just gonna buy your first luxury watch or if you're axing your whole collection and you're gonna just go down to one, one nice watch, which is the watch for you? For me, I could do this Nomos. I could do this Club Sport 42 Neomatic. I, I really think that I could. There are other watches that I think I could too from uh, Glass Huta Original and Adam R. Piguet and uh, some other brands, but the, some of those may be a stretch, but I, I wanted to illustrate the point today with this Nomos. I hope you found the video enjoyable. Again, I'm looking forward to hearing what you guys have to say in the comments, and thank you very much for taking the time to watch. We'll see you in the next one.